morning everyone good morning good morning welcome back everybody and welcome to all the new folks how's everybody doing hey you guys it's cool here in the desert today it's only 95 degrees we are potentially supposed to get our first monsoon of the year by Wednesday, so we'll see. It's overcast and no wind outside, so our temperature is supposed to get up into the 107, 108 range today, so we'll see. Um, anyway, I hope everybody had a great weekend. We did. We had fun in the sun. Yes, we did. Staying out of it. Staying in air. Yeah, you better believe Every it. Every chance we could get. Anyway, folks, as you know, everything that you eat yesterday affects your weigh-in today. So I'm going to share with you guys what we had to eat yesterday. Harry and I are doing the Ketovore Carnivore Challenge. I know some of you are going to be doing that as well with us. And I'll go over stuff uh, more uh, in the comment section later today. But first of all, I want to show you guys what we had to eat that was perfectly keto carnivore yesterday. So, with that. Yeah, because we didn't go over food because it was all, we were at Costco. Well, yeah. yesterday was Sunday, so we're two days behind. So today will be Sundays on the thing. Don't don't get me don't 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 make my blonde this... head work this early in the morning. Okay? Thank you. Okay. So we broke our eighteen hour fast and you guys when I say fasting No, you're right, because I'm off on yes. a day. Yeah, yeah. Harry right. is and I don't purposefully fast. We try to eat about two meals a day unless we're hungry. So I'm just letting you how much time has passed since the last time we ate, okay? So if I tell you I'm gonna fast, a real fast for Harry or I would be eat, not drinking anything but black coffee or unsweetened tea, no collagen, no cream, um, no bone broth, you know, just water and coffee and tea for a true fast that, that would be for autophagy purposes. But we typically break our fast somewhere, you know, around 11, 12-ish for the most part. So that's what I mean when I say it was 18 hours. It's been 18 hours since, since we broke our fast. So anyway, um, we bought a chicken at Costco, and so we had a half, a quarter of a chicken. I like the drum and the wing, and Harry likes the breast meat. I like brown meat. He likes the white meat, if he can have it better. We had a tablespoon of avocado mayo, and we had just a teaspoon of uh, kickin' horseradish mustard on that, just for something to dip it in, because we didn't heat the chicken. It was so hecka hot. It was like 115 or whatever, so we uh, ate it cold. We had 170 grams of Faye non-fat yogurt with a squirt of the meal water in the orange vanilla for flavoring. Now for dinner, I had about six ounces of ribeye. So what I do is I weigh my meat in the beginning and then if I have bones and leftovers, I weigh the bones and leftovers and deduct it or I just deduct the bones to get the true uh, total. Harry had like a little bit of ribeye left from his steak, was about four ounces, so he had that. We had a tablespoon of blue cheese crumbles on that, you guys. We had three eggs uh, with a tablespoon of sour cream, sriracha, and ketchup. We had a tablespoon of butter. We had two scoops of collagen with cream. We had that Zen Z's, um, last night to go to bed on Zevia and Harry had ice plus so that's what we had you guys no well, well okay don't look at what we were because we're not sure but way in today see what happens is I come in and I write on it then Harry comes in and he writes on it and I'm the one that has the uh, updated arrow scale and sometimes it populates his weight we're so close together now, and it, it populates my Fitbit app. But I have to go in and, del and deduct his stuff. Anyway, folks, I just know what today's weight is, for sure. I weigh 179.8, Harry weighed 181.4. And I think we both went down. 
<laughs> I know I did because I'm in the 170s again. I think I did too because I think I was like, I think I went down like two tenths or something. <gasps> I don't know. I'm not sure. Anyways. Anyway, folks. <laughs> the last three days have been real wild because of all the sto buying at stores and stuff we've been doing. You mean bashes and Costco. Costco and, and yeah, and yes. all that stuff. And then back to bashes. And yes. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, folks, hope everybody's having a great day and I will see everybody in the next segment. We are having bacon and eggs, you guys. I prepped some tender belly, uncured, un no sugar added uh, bacon, cherry, cherry wood smoked. So I've got it here. And uh, they had, if you guys watch yesterday's vlog, we went to Bash's again and they had the Hickman's grass fed. Um, Brown eggs for cage free, grass fed for uh, $2.99. Some of these eggs are big suckers. Yeah. You get, look, it's almost round. It's almost totally round. Wow. And then there's this little guy right here. I think that's, and look, he's long. That's now why. These ones are made by really short, fat chicken. <laughs> Anyway, Hickman's Farms is local there in Florence, and they've been working really hard, and I bet you they did this grass-fed um, stuff as a special because of all the odd shapes, but that's fine with me. I have no problem with that. Look at this brown butter. You can see. You Remember, you guys want to let your butter brown. There's a fine line. You guys need to go see the secret to great eggs. Harry will post a link. Huh, Harry? Well, I'll show them the... I'll show them the, the thumbnail. The thumbnail. Yeah. Then you click on it, right? No. No. That's what not do you how. Do? That's not how. How's it work? Tell YouTube them. works. Well, how's it work? They see it and go look for it. Oh, okay. Anyway, I give you guys the secret to great eggs, and that's brown butter. Oh my gosh! When you brown your butter, it takes it to a whole new level. That's why I just love, just love scrambled eggs. Because you get that butter, all that butter, it just absorbs the butter. I don't like getting my eggs too done either. Don't over stir your eggs, you guys. You can always cut it up after you're done. Okay, folks. It's bacon and eggs time. Look how pretty they look. You can see the little golden butter inside of that. I did three eggs each. So we each get three eggs. Oh, Sally heard the word eggs. Here she comes, Pops. And I put just a little teeny bit of water in my eggs. I know that sounds weird, you guys, but you know what it does? It fluffs the eggs better than milk or cream. Well, there's Daisy sour cream right here that I gotta use up. Get a dollop on one. I took the other one out not knowing if we'd need it or not, but it doesn't look like we need it, so that's a good thing. Yeah. I'm going to put some sriracha on Harry's. That one looks like the biggest, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I am putting spicy tomato ketchup on mine because I can, because it's ketovore, not carnivore, it's ketovore, which means you can use some condiments, some. Yeah, not a whole lot, I think. Right, just for flavor. Now, we had bacon in the refrigerator, and this is the Tender Belly Cherry Wood Smoke. You guys get it? At, we get ours. Um, it's, uh, I think, a two-pound container uh, for $16.99. And I think I show that in my Costco haul, don't I? Yep. And we'll split this one. Yep. Let's put some pepper. Oops. You know what? I'm going to give Sally some before I pepper. She gets some eggs. She loves her eggs. Doesn't she, Pop? Yep. Yep, we all get eggs around here. Mmm, good egg. Ha ha ha, boy. Okay, you guys. 
I'm gonna call this break fast and it's 10 o'clock little it's 10 15 but we're hungry and you guys got to come back because I'm gonna make some delicious pulled pork in my instapot yep I am for dinner hey everybody I just uh, opened up a new can of the sparkling ice plus caffeine and this one is strawberry citrus it's delicious Harry, did you taste it? Yes, I did. It's very good. Yeah, he sipped it before he gave it to me. Sorry, sorry, camera. I cheated. Camera. <laughs> yeah, he cheated. He drank mine. I don't drink these as much as the other ice, the regular sparkling ice, which is delicious, but I need a little caffeine today because I'm really slammed. So I just wanted to share that with everybody and I wanted to come and do some comments. <music> Hey, thank you everybody um, for uh, giving us positive feedback on the Costco grocery haul for the new uh, keto folks. I, I kind of wanted to go over, you know, the things that I thought were really good at Costco and what to look for, you know, when you're just starting keto. So thank you very much for the positive feedback. Hey, Debbie. Awesome. You guys. Debbie's been doing keto, but last week she started carnivore. She's lost four pounds, you guys. She has been stalled for months. That is so awesome. Hey, I know about the stalls. Trust me, I've been fighting getting the past the 170s. 180s, 170s, 180s, 170s. 170s. I gotta get past that. That's why I decided to do the uh, carnivore keto war exercise. That's what I call it anyway. So, um, Debbie also says that the Columbus brand organic Costco, the organic turkey meat, and it's Columbus brand, is delicious. That's the one she uses for her lasagna noodles. You guys, Debbie makes no, uh, lasagna and uses the organic turkey thin sliced meat for her noodles. She says it's delicious. I think that's a fabulous idea. Hey, Shastity is going to do the Keto War with us. She's hopping on oh, the yeah. Keto War Carnivore train. Awesome, Shastity. So they're letting you guys go back to work in two weeks. Well, they keep telling us we're going back to the building. And then, you know, Arizona, I don't know if you guys have been watching the news. It's hard to watch. And I don't like watching too much of it because it just is depressing. But Arizona is a hot spot. We're shipping people with the virus, I guess, to New Mexico now to help out. I saw that on the news today, so that's kind of scary. Thank you, Nan. I appreciate it. Yeah, I try to show the ingredients and talk about it a little bit. You know, there's some things that were keto, those crackers and stuff, but you gotta, you know, if you can only have a little bit, you're not, you're, you can have one or two crackers. Those are fine, but think about it. 18 carbs minus two grams of fiber and you get 17. That's one carb per cracker on those almond crackers. And those crackers are small. They're little square. They're little. They're not a big, like a saltine cracker or anything. They're little. They're not like you can, you know, even use them kind of hors d'oeuvres. You can dip with them, but they're not big enough to put anything on like an hors d'oeuvre, a crudite bottom. So I just can't do that, you guys. So, yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you, thank you, Maria. Thank you, Linda. You know, it's funny because we that Costco that we went to is a bigger Costco than three other ones in our area. My girlfriend, Shelly loves to come down to this Costco because she's got one in Cave Creek and one up north Phoenix. She lives in Anthem, closer to, I mean, yeah, in Anthem, closer to where she lives. And she loves ours because she says it's bigger. And we've even gone to the one in Paradise Valley over by my Steinbart. Yes, we have. And it's just not, doesn't have near the stuff. And this, this one that we go to has a ton of clothes too, but they already had winter stuff. You, you come out of 113 degree heat and you're looking at hoodies and sweats and I'm like, I, I can't even, I can't even fan them that yet here. So, and um, when salad mate 
Met Bacon. I love that name. When Salad Met Bacon. How cute is that? I may have to steal that sometime. I love it. We do both with our liverwurst. I like liverwurst cold straight out of the uh, refrigerator with a little bit of mayo and mustard on it. And you know, if you guys like uh, sweet and sour bread and butter pickles, Vlasic makes bread and butter pickles with sucralose. Yes, they're dirty, but if you like that sweet pickles, they're absolutely delicious. I take that liverwurst, I put a little bit of mayonnaise, a little bit of mustard, and top it with one classic, no sugar added bread and butter pickle. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. I fried them up in a pan and served them with eggs too. So I like them both. And it's, it, my husband hates liver, plain liver. Now his taste may have changed from a kid, but he was anemic as a child. And his mother used to boil liver and make him eat it. And he hates liver. Hates the smell of liver, but he loves liverwurst. Especially the liverwurst that's made by Jones that has bacon in it. Um, yeah, he really does. So liverwurst, bratwurst is kind of a segue. <coughs> Pardon me. I swallowed wrong. Uh, it's a segue into the organ meats. And I think it just has really good flavor. And I really like it. So make sure you're reading the backs. Um, you know, there's curing process with meat and with processed meat. Just make sure you count the carb part of that, okay? And you can go to delis, especially kosher Jewish delis. They make the best chopped chicken liver salad. Oh, if, you, if you guys have any in your area and they put a little bit of crumbled eggs on it, if you are lucky enough to have a kosher Jewish deli, by you that's open that then go in there and ask them for some um chopped chick chicken liver pate or chicken liver because it's so good they make it good and i really like it so if you want to experiment with liver and organ meats i would suggest getting like a, a chopped liver pate or chopped chicken liver at a Jewish delicatessen or at a deli. Um, and I would also suggest the Jones liverwurst because it's a milder taste. It's It's got a lot of good seasonings in it. You do kind of taste the liver, but the bacon. And if you ever want to experiment with just making bacon, I mean making liver, here's the trick. You take the liver and you buy just a small thing of milk. You pour the milk in a bowl and you put your liver in the milk and it pulls a lot of the blood out of it in the milk and it sweetens the liver. Then you take it and you dry it off and you chop it thinly. You get a big slab of Kerrygold butter. You put it in the pan or ghee. You chop about five pieces of bacon you put that in the frying pan, okay? And then you chop your liver finely. You know, thinner strips or little bite-sized pieces. And you grill it in the frying pan with the bacon. And if you like onions and you can have onions and they don't kick you or cause you stomach upset, you chop some onions really thin and you wring them and you just put like a slice or two of onion in there and you toss that all together until it caramelizes the onions and the bacons get crispy. And then you serve that up and you eat a little piece of bacon with a little piece of um, liver and some onion. And you guys, it really tastes good that way. That's how my mom made liver and onions. And of course you can salt and pepper to taste. But that is the best way to make liver and onions. And if you don't want to get or can't get beef liver, do the same with chicken liver. You take the liver, you buy a little carton of milk, you just let it sit in there for about 15 minutes on the counter in a bowl of milk. Then you dry it, then you chop it up. You chop your bacon up, you get your Kerrygold butter in a pan, you, you start browning the bacon so that it releases some of the fat. Then you get your slice or two of onion and take the rings thinly and put them in the pan and start cooking them. Then you put your liver in there so you've got your bacon, onions, and liver. Oh, it's so good, you guys. It really is. So just give it a try. You don't have anything to lose, you know. So liverwurst it's good and it's good for you so 
Just wanted to answer some of the questions, you guys. Let's see what else, what else, what else? Yeah, I got a great deal on Hamburger Mary. Two seventy-seven a pound. They only let you have two, but we had to go back the next day, uh, Sunday, after our ride um, to visit my daughter Chalice and Dave to drop off the keto um, products that I bought for them. And my mom needed dog food, so I ran in there and said, "I wonder if they still have uh, hamburger." And I bought two more packages. So thank you, Team Dave and Mon. Appreciate it. And yes, Pam, blueberry syrup. The brand is Walden Farms. It is sweetened with sucralose. And they have um, regular maple syrup. It's got the look and feel of regular, like Mrs. Butterworth syrup, syrup to me. Um, they also have walnut maple. They have strawberry. And they have several other things that are zero keto, in, including a caramel sauce and a chocolate sauce, which I have not tried. And jam. So if you like blueberry syrup, I would get some because Nan is the one I believe who turned us on to the blueberry syrup and that's why I in my head made those lemon and blueberry um, chaffles. It's it's delicious and it's just uh, really good. So let me know Pam if you buy some and let me know if you guys like it. Hey if anybody's tried the strawberry Walden Farm syrup let me know below. Send me a comment. Is it as good as the blueberry? Does it have a strawberry taste to it? I'm kind of thinking after my keto work carnivore, I'm going to make something with like mashed strawberries, make a strawberry compote, strawberry syrup, cream cheese, more like a hoping it tastes like um, strawberry shortcake kind of thing. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of doing. My mind is always going on recipes in my head and it, my husband goes, how can you do that? And it's because I could put it's weird. I can throw things in a recipe and taste it in my mind. I don't know if that makes sense or not to anybody, but but I do. I have a girlfriend, Shelly, who's a fabulous cook. And she loves, she makes tons of cookies and stuff for the church folk. Every Sunday when she goes to church, they have, you know, coffee and social hour and they can't wait for Shelly's cookies. She makes my favorite snickerdoodle cookies, the best of all time I've ever had. I've never had her make me keto snickerdoodles because even if they were keto, I know she would make fabulous cookies. She makes the best jams and preserves. She loves to cook. So I'm gonna have to talk to her about some keto stuff. My problem is I can't keep that stuff in my house because if I have it, I'll eat it. It's like Harry, that bomb bandit, pork rind bandit. There's certain things you know, if you have, and I saw you guys, my eyes, uh, I've got my slider door uh, open for my plants and it's reflecting in my eyes so nobody can see my eyes. So anyway, if you guys can make cookies and stuff that are keto and keep them and just eat one or two at a time, that's awesome. But my, when last cookies we had in the house that were keto, my daughter made chalice and we gobbled them right down. Say, and Harry ate the lemon bars gone. Anyway, let's see what this is. Uh, Camille, well, tell your little one happy birthday. Had a birthday party, and she's on a, she had a few indiscretions. No, what you did is you had a treat, and the good news is you just hop right back on the keto bandwagon. She's going to be on a five-day egg fast starting today, so keep us informed. Hey, if you guys are on a bacon fast, an egg fast, a bacon and egg fast, a hamburger fast, let me know so we can root you guys on. Share with us. And don't forget, you guys, we have a new Facebook group, Loving It on Keto. We'll put the link below. You guys, please join. And the things that you guys are doing, post them on Facebook so other people can get the benefits from that. Camille, post what you're eating on your egg fast. Are you making egg crepes? Are you making an egg loaf? Are you doing any of those special recipes? Are you just going plain and simple? Scrambled, hard-boiled, poached, you know, slab some fat on it and eat it. What are you doing? Let me know. Same with carnivore. You guys have any good recipes? Are you slow cooking it? Are you putting it in an Instapot? Are you pressure cooking it? Let us know, you guys. You help other people with their keto journey by telling us what you're doing. Telling us, you know, what works for you. So, I'll come back if there's more... Um, 
if there's any more comments, uh, if I can, but I am slammed today and I've got a meeting at 3.30 this afternoon. So I will try to get to comments either today. If there's more that come in either today or tomorrow, I'll add them on tomorrow. Hope everybody's having a great day. Hey, you guys, we're supposed to get them on soon this week. Yeah, supposed to get some water, some rain. That'd be cool, literally cool. So this morning it was only in the 90s, but the humidity factors coming in and you know what that does heat and humidity it's oppressive you take a shower you dry off you can't dry off because you're it's so humid <laughs> how many people have been there in the south right 90 98 percent humidity and you're trying to dry off and it's not working yeah been there done that anyway folks i'll see everybody in the next segment Okay, hey everyone, I am going to take four pounds of pork sirloin country style ribs and I'm going to cook it in, pressure cook it, in my Power Pressure Cooker XL. I call it Instapot because it's kind of the same type of thing. So basically, I'm just going to get the meat out and just put the meat in. It's a lot of meat. Nice. This is what I got on sale, you guys, at Bash's for $1.69. A pound or? $1.69 a pound. Yeah, I got a really good buy on it. Last time we did this, oh my gosh, we loved it. So. Now, I want to um, layer my seasoning. So I want to come down put a little bit of my Byron's butt rub and I'll share it in just a second. Just regular old Kirkland's garlic powder, you guys, because we like our garlic. Put a little bit of that on there. Yeah, it keeps the vampires away. Yeah, it keeps the vampires away. And then I'm taking some Redmond's organic seasoned salt and salting this. Okay, now I am, because I'm pressure cooking it, you have to put in a cup of liquids. And I, can, I have a chicken bone broth on hand. I got this at Costco, it comes in a case. It's got really good macros, it's just organic chicken stock, organic chicken flavor, contains organic chicken. Zero carbs, so I'm just gonna put in a cup I think bone broth is best instead of water. Anytime it calls for water and you're dealing with cooking meat or, or vegetables. So I'm just putting a cup in. And because we're ketovore, not carnivore, okay, I'm adding some of the steak sauce from Primal Kitchen because it's got an A1 flavor. Okay, it's got that A1 flavor. So I'm just gonna put a little bit over the top. Cause this will all go into the meat. And then I'm taking some of the sweet stevia barbecue sauce. And the reason why I'm using the sweet is between the two, it makes it more spicy. It does, it takes some of the sweet out cause Harry doesn't like sweet. And it gives it a really good flavor. It evens out the flavor, okay? Just put a little bit in there, slosh it on, and then I'm taking some Worcestershire sauce. I have organic Annie's Worcestershire sauce, and I'm just putting a little bit of that. Again, it takes away the sweetness. Just adds some tanginess to the meat. Just adds a little tanginess to the meat. And then I'm just gonna cover it and get it going, folks. Thank you, dear. And I want it to be on pressure, and I want to do chicken and meat, but I want to um, time adjust the time. I want to cook this, I know, 
for at least an hour. I want it to fall off the bones. I want it to be absolutely delicious. And then when this comes up to speed, this will come up to speed, it will come up to pressure. I want it to slow release because I want that meat to fall off the bone in its own juice. And then what I'll do with that juice is I'll make a gravy with it and make kind of put a little bit of gar gum or xanthan gum to make it thicker and use it like a, a barbecue sauce. So I will show everybody once this is cooked. Okay, everybody, my pork is ready and I'm gonna pull it out. We're gonna open up the lid and see what it, take, give it a picky see. See what it looks like. Mmm, oh, it smells delicious. I'm gonna put this over here. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh yeah, falls apart. That's what you want. That's what you want. Fall apart meat, man. How long did it cook for totally? I put it on in for an hour and then I let it release itself by itself, slow release. Yeah. So I'm gonna give you an ounce of cheese. I'm gonna give you an uh, ounce of sour cream. And I'm going to give you just a teeny bit of horseradish because we are keto war. And you can mix that in there. I'm going to put a little bit of this steak sauce on top just to kind of give it a little bit more flavor. That one's yours. Find some meat. And then I'll go through here and pull the bones out and make some sauce and gravy and all that good stuff but for right now god that smells so good make sure i know doesn't it it's like yeah. oh my god the whole house smells really good oh here we go seven ounces and then this should be and this little powder bit i'll let sally have that here sal Lift the plate, babe. I'm in an ounce of cream cheese. I want a little bit of horseradish on mine as well, because we're like a little kick up, kicking, little kicking horseradish. But for me, I want some of the sweets, sweet, stevia sweets barbecue sauce on mine instead of the steak sauce, because I like sweet barbecue sauce, you guys. I'm a sweet gal. That's right. Mmm, gosh. Can you smell that? It just smells so darn delicious, doesn't it, Harry? Oh. Yep. Harry Shinsky. Y'all no, say there, Harry. I'll come there. I'll come to you. I want to get a little bit of sour cream with the horseradish, with the cheese. A little bit of that. Mm mm. A little bit of sauce. Mm, it's so good. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, folks. If you guys like what you see, like, subscribe, ring that bell, give us a thumbs up. Fingers crossed that we lose weight eating this deliciousness. I'll see you tomorrow. Gotta eat now, folks. Good night.